Hello and welcome to this quick start guide that's well over an hour and 40 minutes for podcast editing within Pro Tools. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a new session, how the app is laid out, a bit of the UI. I'll be teaching you to edit and mix your podcast lightning quick, he says. Um, this is a quick start guide. I know it's an hour and 43 minutes. There's going to be... Uh, chapters in the description to help you jump around. But if you're looking for more granular detail about Pro Tools itself, there is all of my Pro Tools Primer course is now on this channel. Just have a little quick search for Pro Tools Primer. You'll find all of those. Um, and if you've got any questions about podcast editing or Pro Tools, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Now let's stop waffling and let's get editing. Okay, so when Pro Tools opens for the first time, you'll get the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can create a new session, you can open recent sessions, and you can save projects. Uh, you can sign into your Avid account here for your cloud storage and your project sharing. Uh, but today we are gonna work locally. I always recommend working locally, I'll be honest. Unless you're collaborating, keep it local, keep it on a separate drive. I have a separate drive for different types of media. So the Pro Tools is just running Pro Tools on the system drive. It's read and writing media from relevant other drives. Definitely prevents crashes. Avid's getting better and better every time they roll out Pro Tools. Doesn't crash anywhere near as much as it used to, but traditionally, keep your media on a separate drive, you know where it is then. So that's our local storage. Uh, you can create from template, Pro Tools comes with a load of pre-installed templates. So if you're doing specific type of music or a specific post-production project, you've got large TV mixes here and stereo mixes, um, we're going to build a new session from scratch today. So we will call this Pro Tools. Quick start. Uh, down here, we've got the information about the session setup. So file type. Always stay with WAV, it's industry standard. Sample rate, TV and film are 24 bit 48K, music is 16 bit 44.1. With post production, we're going to stay 48K. Can you use higher sample rates? Yes, you can. Is it worth your while? Mm, probably not. This is a quick start guide for people trying to find their way around Pro Tools. 48K is great. 24 bit spot on. Can you use 32 bit? Yes, it uses up more hard drive space and we don't need it really unless we're recording into Pro Tools to really benefit from that higher bit depth and the floating point to prevent clipping. IO setting, set this up as last used. If you're taking projects between studios or other people are sharing the project, you can save your own IO so that every time it comes back to your studio, you can say use my stereo mix or but I'd say last used. We're going to click interleaved. Traditionally, Pro Tools didn't allow interleaved files. It liked to take a stereo file, split it into two monos, label one with an L and one with a right. And yeah, it would just sit in the session and look like a stereo file with some drop downs. I can show you that. But now we can have interleaved. Uh, this chooses where you save your session. We're going to save it on my dedicated audio drive, but you can ask it to prompt for location every time you save a new session that is. To show and hide this on restart, there's this little checkbox down here for the dashboard to disappear. And we can open from disk and we can cancel, which we won't do. Let's create our first session. So this is the Pro Tools window that you will get when you first open Pro Tools. I am in dark mode. I'm sorry if you hate dark mode. Um, it's just a default for me these days. You can change this in your preferences. Classic, dark. I'm gonna go back to dark. I prefer dark. So this window here is your edit window. We've got our tools along the top here, our toolbar. We've got our time base and our time code measurements. We've got some grid functionality. We've got transport control and we've got some meters and working our way around the from the top here we've got our track list or bin if some people are coming from uh, non-linear editors this is our track bin this is our main edit timeline window tracks will appear here 
up here is the universe and this will show like a high level um, overview of everything within the session and you can kind of move around within this. When we have our clips bin or a clip list, this is where all of our media will go and we can sort through it in here. We have the menu functionalities on all of these bins or lists. And down the bottom here, I have a group list or bin. Uh, this will primarily be track groups or specific edit or mix groups that you create within your Pro Tools session. The next window I want to show you behind here is the mix window. Now the mix window has the track bin, it also has the group bin, and it has a load of blank space because we have no tracks just yet. To toggle between these two, uh, it's command and equals on the top of your keyboard next to backspace. Um, for PC users, it is control and equals. So, nice little overview of our layouts. Now I'm gonna just jump straight in and start making some tracks. I know what I want, follow along if you want something similar. We're gonna be editing a podcast. We've got some dialogue, we've got some music, we've got a sound effect we're gonna go in and we're gonna to want to mix this and output it as an MP3. So, to make a new track, we can go to track new and it'll open the new tracks box or alternatively command shift N or control shift N on a PC and we've got access to add a new tracks track or tracks uh, we can change the number of tracks we want there if we hold down command and left and right on the directional arrows we can change the channel type uh, so we're going to have, let's have some mono first. So I have one mono. Uh, if you hold down command or control and go up and down, you can choose the track type. So let me show you the track types. You've got routing folders. Anything put into that folder is routed through that folder for signal path purposes. A basic folder is more of a uh, UI functionality. You can put a load of tracks in a folder and you can shut that folder up and it'll compact them all down into a single track. Your audio track will hold your audio media. An aux input you could consider as a uh, sort of a bus bringing things together. So it doesn't have any audio in it specifically. It's more of a channel through. Then you've got your master fader. This is normally attached to a hardware output, a VCA, uh, voltage controlled actuator or volume controlled amplifier. There's a number of different ones that can essentially take a number of tracks and by moving a single VCA fader, you can control multiple track faders. MIDI tracks for instruments, instrument track for virtual instruments and a video track for videos. Pro Tools does let you save track presets and they do have a couple all ready for you, but we're just going to create some audio tracks. So I'm going to create the first audio track I'm going to create is a sound effect audio track. To add a new one, we're going to go Command Shift and N. And I'm going to add two mono audio tracks and I'm going to call these DX. I am going to add two stereo audio tracks. Tab will take you across to rename. And I'm going to call these MX for music. And now I'm going to add some stereo auxes. And we'll just leave those as aux for now. I'm going to have another stereo aux and I'm going to call this FX rep. Very good. And we're going to have one master fader as well. So let's bring that in there. And we'll click create and it will create our tracks. So Pro Tools does have some default colorings. Audio tracks are blue, uh, auxes are green and masters are red. Just going to quickly show you, if you do want to change that, you can double click on this little bit here and you can change the color and you can choose whether you're changing the tracks or the clips within the tracks or clips within this clip list or groups. But for now, I'm happy just to leave it the way it is. Uh, actually, no, let's change that. Let's make this one. Lello. 
And we'll make, leave those like that and we'll change these ones. And select them by holding down Command or Control and clicking on the name. And we'll double click in there. And I'm going to make these uh, 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 pink. Why not? There we go. Just going to move him down there. Uh, okay. So we have made some tracks. Now let's get some audio in so that I can start to show you how the signal flow works. So I have some audio ready made in my hard drive. Pro Tools Assets. So this is a podcast called The Progress Theory, hosted by this man here, Dr. Phil Price. And he interviewed the legend that is Fergus Crawley. Now, there's several ways you can get audio into Pro Tools. You can, of course, drag and drop. But that does come with an inherent risk that you don't know whether you're importing media that is compatible with your session. Pro Tools is really kind and it will sample rate convert stuff to the session settings, which are Control and Numpad 2 or Command and Numpad 2 for uh, Mac. So we can see here it's 48K, 24-bit. We can see time code if we're doing video. We're not doing video in this quick time, uh, quick start guide. So we can check that. So the safest way when you're first starting out with Pro Tools is to go import audio, shift, command, and I, or control, shift, and I for uh, PC. So we can see here all of the import information. We know that this file that we're going to bring in is a WAV, 24-bit. We can see how long it is. Sample rate's good. If we'd have dragged this in, it would have been fine. But while you're starting to learn Pro Tools, use this window so that you're aware of what's happening to the audio you bring in. If you bring in a sample rate that is different to your session, it has the possibility of sounding slow and paused or sped up depending on whether there is sample rate conversion happening or not. With also this window, we can see these four options. Adding something is never a good idea, purely because if you move from one studio to another and you've added something from your desktop, it is not with your session anymore. Okay, you need to be able to make sure that everything is in the same place. So I always do copy. So we're gonna copy this file, that's Dr. Phil, that's Fergus's full interview. And this small file here, we can see, look, 16-bit, 48K. Uh, let's bring in some music as well. This is the music track. This is from Epidemic Sound, so these all come at 24-bit, 48K. Again, we're going to copy that in. And let's bring in our little whoosh as well. So that's all of those there. And we can click Open. This will then ask you, where do you want to save that audio? We're going to copy it. Where do you want it saved? Now, Pro Tools has a nice little ecosystem that when you name a project, it will create a folder within it. The session file itself is there, .ptx. And it creates all of these folders while the session is open. When the session closes, if there were no video files, there were no bounce files, no clip groups, it will just remove the folders. And next time you open that session, those folders will appear ready for you to add that type of media. But in the meantime, we're going to keep everything in, in the right place. So audio files will go in the audio files folder. On audio import, it gives you these two options. This is only through the audio import window. If you drag and drop onto the timeline, it just assumes you want it on the timeline. It doesn't give you this option. Uh, if you drag and drop to the track bin, it will create new tracks. It won't ask you, it just says you want new tracks with this media in. If you drag and drop into the clip bin or clip list, again, it will just leave it in here. It won't ask you if you want new tracks or anything. It just says you've made your mind up, you know where you're putting it. So only on that kind of import audio window will you get this option. And we can choose whether we want a new track and we can choose where, where we want to put it in that new track in relation to the timeline. 
But in this case, we're just going to go into this clip list here. Now, as I mentioned at the start, Pro Tools does handle interleaved files or a single file having multiple channels. Uh, this is how that kind of looks. You can see these little drop downs here will show you the L and R side. If you wanted to, you could import just one side of a stereo track to bring it in that's on two mono channels and this is what it looks like on a stereo channel okay so that's file types uh, delete is just backspace i have a little button on my thumb that allows me to delete things very very quickly so i'm going to quickly throw in some media I'm just going to slip that throw in some media uh, zoom out is R and T is move in, zoom in. This functions brilliantly with this thing here highlighted. This is a keyboard focus. You'll see these at other points around Pro Tools. We've got another one down here. If we go to the mix window, you'll see it there as well. However, for editing purposes, keyboard focus on this window here. And that's R and T to zoom in. And I'm going to grab the second interview, Fergus. And holding down a control on a Mac and Windows on a PC, I'm going to drag that in and underneath. And as you can see, I'm trying to move that left to right. It's not coming in because I've made the selection of the track above it. And then I've held control and dragged it in and it's matched that positioning, that start positioning. So here is my podcast. It's a long one. We will not be editing it all today. That would defeat the point of this being a quick start guide. And I've got Dr. Phil's intro that will go there. And that will do for the moment. We'll put the other goodies in in a second. So what I want to show you now is basic routing in Pro Tools. I want this aux to be my dialogue bus. I want this aux to be my music bus. I want this one to be my SFX bus. Ooh. SFX. There we go. And this one will be my mix. So buses, as I said, are through channels. So there's no audio on them, but we're gonna have, we're gonna route audio through them. So what I would like to do is I would like to take my dialogue audio and put it into this channel so that I've got control over all of the dialogue on one fader. Now, the reason I do this, and I'll do this, I'll go into greater detail in the course, is I like to create a master archive. And by that, I mean, I like to have an archive of all of the dialogue in my podcast, all of the sound effects, and all of the music separately. And then I export the master, which is the full mix with it all together. What this means is that if I'm creating promos and I don't want the music all over the intro, I can just go to the dialogue archive file and just use that to edit with or say i just want to use the music for something else completely different i can dive in and i can get the intro music without having to re-edit the intro music which i will be demonstrating so we're just going to root these now here in pro tools is the routing functionality on the track itself io in and out so for demo purposes I'm going to remove the inputs of all of these audio tracks because we aren't recording any audio in this session. And at the moment, they are all routed to out one and two. And out one and two is routed to my speakers. Now, I'm going to route this to bus one and two. I'm going to route this to bus one and two. Uh, music, I'm going to boot the two, three, and four. I'm going to do that to three and four. 
And the sound effects are going to go to five and six. Now, the input of my aux will be the bus that has the dialogue in. And I'm going to send that to seven and eight. The music comes in on three and four. And I'm going to send that to seven and eight too. And the sound effects come in on five and six. And that is going to go out to seven and eight. Bear with me on this if it's confusing. It will all make sense in a moment. Uh, we're just going to ignore this guy for the moment, this effects return. We will talk about that in a second. Okay. So now if I press play. 60K in the same day, which is just a bit of fun. And then in that entire period, the being the big change. We can see that the dialogue was appearing on the audio track that the dialogue is on. Just there. And sub 12 Iron Man disc track. It's going I had into the dialogue bus. And then it is being routed to my mix bus, which is going out of my masters, which is and sub 12 Iron my Man speakers. Disc and then I had. Now then, some housekeeping to make this look a little bit neater. If we go to setup, IO, this is how the routing works in Pro Tools. So we can see all of my input sources. I'm using a, a, a routing mechanism called Source Nexus at the moment, but this would be your Focusrite interface or maybe even your, your computer's um, sound card that you might have built in. So this is inputs, hardware inputs sort of thing. Outputs, I've got my speakers here. So what we could do is we could actually change that to say monitors to make that be easier. And now buses. Now you need to think of buses as like a patch lead. You've all seen them in like those music studios when they patch from one place to the other. A bus is that cable, that quarter inch jack cable or telephone jack cable. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to rename it and we're going to call this the DX bus and this one was the music music this was the sound effects and this is our mix bus now we can see that makes loads more sense we can see where things are going they're going straight out to the monitors so that is basic routing in Pro Tools. And if I play a little, I'm just going to turn this down. This is the advantage of having buses. Explorative with their training since lockdown, since they didn't have gym access, since they've got a bit stagnant with things or since they want to think about it. When people think of like being a specialist, they're okay, they do one sport. Okay, cool. But you're great. So I know that all of my routing is right. I can control the volume at several points across the mix. Uh, to put the fader back, hold down Alt and click. I call Option Alt. I will continue to call it Alt. I don't call it Option. It says Alt on the Mac keyboard. It says Alt on a PC keyboard. Let's all call it Alt. Um, think so about yeah. it when people think of like being a specialist. When routing and not just using one master output across all of your tracks, this does cause a little ripple effect with soloing. So we've got control here of solo, mute on each track. We've got record arming and we've got audio input. So if I solo, because it's going to a bus, the bus is not soloed. So any aux inputs you make, hold down control on a PC and command on a Mac and click on solo. And what it does is it makes that channel exempt from any solo functionality. So if I press solo now. Think about it, when people think of like being a specialist, okay, they do one sport. And we are off to the races. Think about it, when people think of like being a specialist, okay, they do so one sport. Okay, so that's basic functionality of routing your signal around Pro Tools. Of course, if you are just wanting to get going with this, you can just make some new audio tracks and have them route straight out to your monitors or your headphones or wherever you want to send it. But let's get into the editing functionality of Pro Tools. This is what it's known for. It is brilliant as an audio editor. Let's start 
at the top here, I'm going to go from right to left because why not? At the top, we have got our meters here. Press and then play. might be the sort of people like I was when I was... I'm going to pull this master down so I don't blow your ears off. Um, so Pro Tools has a number of different uh, meter styles. Linear, Pro Tools Classic, Sample Peak, all great for when you're starting out. However, if you want my two cents, I like to use the K12 metering system uh, designed by Bob Katz. Why? In a nutshell, if this sits roughly in the yellow and green top of the Fully green, the tank, which may be just going into the yellow. The tank in the past, I, I know that's roughly where I want it. That's loudness wise, we're not going to go into loudness today. That's pretty much where I want it. If you're sitting nicely in the K12, Psychologically, that was it's a bit quiet. In that sense. I'd want to pull that I up a little bit. There we go. Comparing the 12. Yeah, a little bit into the amber. I know that that's going to be good overall and I can pull it up and pull it down on the final mix pass. Moving along to our left, we have our transport control. This is the online functionality for when you've got other peripherals attached to Pro Tools, uh, whether it be some sort of video hardware or a machine from back in the day, you would put that into online mode and that would continue to share the information, transport information with an external device. Stop is stop, play is play, record. Cycle is left. Record is record. You have different record modes. We're not going to dive into those record modes. Those will all be covered in the Pro Tools Primer course. Uh, you get that by right clicking on the record button. You can right click on the play button as well and it gives you options to run at half speed. Prime for playback if you're going to do some MIDI stuff or you want to cue it in. Loop playback that's pretty handy i normally leave that on and a dynamic transport um return to start rewind fast forward shoot to end of media within the session it won't go to the end of session when you click that it will go to the end the last piece of media um and that's just in case you have like a session set up where it's set up to have like a, a 10 hour long session there's nothing down there so it goes to the last piece of media Moving along to our left further, we have our grid functionality. How big is your grid? You can see, let me just put it into grid mode and zoom in with our T button. You can see these little lines, that's our grid mode and we can change how fine our grid is. It is currently in milliseconds. I normally work with time code in TV and post-production work. So we'll set this to time code and one frame is normally adequate enough. Um, so that's the grid. The nudge is a similar kind of thing. It has the same options in terms of time base and then how much. We can nudge using the comma will take us one frame in this example one unit back uh, full stop will take us one unit forward well later but to the right um, m will do five backwards question mark slash will go five forwards that's five of the unit that you have pre-selected here uh, so that is the nudge and the grid amounts. Then this is our time code inputs. We can choose a start time if we want, and it will take us to there for selections, or you can choose a duration here, 20 seconds, please. And we just go 20 minutes. Bop. Then we have our time code. We can choose our time base here. Uh, to get to that, we just press the asterisk or the times or multiply button on the numpad, and that will take us to time code. So we're in here, which go bing, and we can choose, take me to 14. You can use the decimal point to add double zero. 14 minutes, please. That'll take us to 14 minutes. Now, moving over to our left further, I'm going to talk about the editing tools. 
And I'm going to start with this one here, which is Toggle Zoom. Now, Toggle Zoom can be activated on your keyboard by just tapping E, as long as keyboard focus is lit here. Now, Zoom Toggle is a way of zooming in and filling the screen as much as possible with whatever you've got selected. So if I've got just this little bit selected and I hit E or I click the zoom toggle, it will fill the screen with that thing. If I've got slightly more selected, it will fill the screen with that. And you can zoom toggle back off with E as well. E, 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 E. Uh, incredibly useful. You will find yourself tapping E, R and T for the zoom in, zoom out, R and T, and then E to zoom right in and you can have a good look at things. However, I must warn that if you change the height within the zoom toggle and you think, oh, God, that's, that's not very good. And you can change the height of things here. Um, when you come back out of it, you've got to remember that you were in zoom toggle. Don't start amending the track heights and the zoom and stuff. When you're in zoom toggle, uh, just come out of it and then it'll remember. As you can see, it goes back to full height every time. Next to that is the zoom functionality. Normal zoom, uh, so we just select this and it will zoom in, hold down alt to get zoom out. Single zoom, I have no idea why you would want this, but it exists. If you click it, it goes once and then changes back into another tool, whatever tool you were using prior. Pointless in my mind, um, but we've got R and T and we've got E, so probably won't ever click on this. Next, we have got the trimmer tool. And this allows us to come in on the edge of things and trim. Uh, after we get past the halfway point, it will trim from the other side. So there's always a meridian line that will affect its functionality. And we can trim in and we can trim back out as well. It's not just trim in. The trimmer has other functionality. I'm not going to recommend that you, while you're learning Pro Tools, you play with these. This first one will allow you to time, compress and expand, speed stuff up, slow it down. It can sound awful. I wouldn't recommend speeding stuff up. Cut the breaths out and tighten it up. That's the better post-production tip there. The scrub tool, again, you can use the edge of the scrub and you can listen to the edge of the beyond the edge of the clip. Uh, and then looping is as you grab things out, it doesn't pull the clip out, it creates a loop of that clip. Keep it in standard. Then we've got our selector tool, and this is just to make selections. You can make selections over multiple tracks, uh, and you can use r &T to zoom in on those selections. Uh, so that's the selector. And then we have the grabber. And this is essentially just grabs a whole clip and allows you to move around that clip. Different types of grabber are separation grabber. This works when you have made a selection and then you go grabber and it will cut it out. If I was in time base and I went grab, it grabbed the whole thing. And the last one is object based. And this allows you to grab objects that aren't locked to timeline. So if I go like that and grab that, it hasn't grabbed everything within that timeline. Let's me, let's me put it there, show you this. So I'm going to hold down command to uh, shift to grab another region or clip, I should say. And it's not grabbed this one. So that's object grabber. Uh, Z for undo or command Z, control Z, but Z if you've got keyboard focus on to undo, and that's what I was doing there. I'm going to leave this in time. The next tool we've got here is the scrubber tool, uh, and this allows you to scrub through the sound. Maybe some CBM. Uh, you cannot use this to remix music. It doesn't work like that. It is only usable outside of playback. So you can scrub through and try and find that little noisy click or pop. Next, we have got the pencil tool. And the pencil tool is primarily used for writing automation nodes. And we can draw little shapes like that. This is our volume automation line here. And it drops in little nodes like that. There are different types of pencil. There are straight lines, there are triangles, there are random, there are parabolic, and there are S-curve. Random's quite fun for uh, 
sound design, as you can see, just craziness there. We'll undo that. However, there is a great option with Pro Tools is to use all of these tools together as a smart tool. You can access this by using the F keys. So what I am going to suggest is if you are on a Mac to look at your keyboard, you want to use F1, F2 as their like normal functionality. Um, this will allow us to cycle through the smart tools, as you can see there. Um, so F6 is the trimmer. We're going to put that to standard. Zoom is F5, F4. Uh, F1, 2, 3, 4, our edit modes, we'll go to those in a second. There's our zoom functionality. F6 is our trimmer. Our selector, our grabber, scrub, and pencil. If you tap F6 and 7 together, you get the smart tool. F7 and 8 together, you get the smart tool. Or if you hit all three, 6, 7, and 8, F6, 7, and 8, you get the smart tool. You might be thinking, what's the smart tool? Let me show you what a smart tool is. Pro Tools has found a way to, it's going to use a control or windows and up and down to make the track bigger on the directional arrows. As we can see, as we move the mouse above and below this horizon line, the functionality of the tool changes. So I'm just going to make a selection. I'm going to use the letter B to break to separate that so I can show you the smart tool in a small space. So anywhere in the middle and above, we get the selection tool. We can make selections. Anywhere below, it turns into the grabber and it grabs the whole clip. Anywhere near the edge of it, it turns into the trimmer to allow us to trim in and out undo. This also brings me on to another point, which is fades. The top corners will allow you to produce fade ins and fade outs. Undo those. And the bottom corner will allow you to create fade across fades across two clips. So it's pretty handy having the smart tool on. So below grab, Above select, edge trim, fades from crossfade in, crossfade out, and crossfade across two clips in the bottom. So that's the smart tool. So you want that with F6 and F7. Now let me run through the next few items in the toolbar. Our first item here is tab to transient. Oh, I should suggest that. If you're learning, you want to head to preferences and you want to turn on display functions and details. And this means that when you hover over something, it should tell you what it's called. There we are. So this is tab to transient. This allows you to use the tab button on your keyboard to tab to the next transient, next audio peak. We just hop back and I hit tab. It's going to take me to that next moment. We zoom in with T. And we can see as the audio appears, it's decided that is the next transient point. This is great if you're cutting up something that has a specifically loud transient, like drums or footsteps, or even if you're doing specific editing to two of the same clip or something, you can. Use the tab to transient to know that that will be the same place. I don't have tab to transient on most of the time while I'm editing. Why? Because I have multiple clips, like lots and lots of different clips, and I find it a lot easier to use that tab functionality to move between these clips as opposed to every single transient peak. So undo those. Uh, the next functionality we have here, which is link timeline to edit selection. I make a selection here. Up here in the timeline, it has linked it to. If this is off and I link there and I press play, it's going to play just from here, not from my selection. 
again, as you're learning Pro Tools, I recommend you have this on so as you move, Pro Tools moves with you. Next, this is the track linked and edit selection. With this off, if I make a selection up here, you can see that it's still got this track highlighted. So it doesn't mean that it's gonna do anything to this track. So as you're moving around, you want to make a change to the track you're on, you want this selected. So as I go up there, it now selects this track. Now, why does this matter? Well, a functionality that I use a load in Pro Tools is Shift and S, which is quick solo on that track. So I'm working on here, just want to listen to this. We're going to solo this. If I move up here, Shift and S, solo that. Okay, the next functionality on here is the link track selection and edit selection. So if I make a selection here, you can see that the track hasn't followed. I prefer this on all the time so that as I move around Pro Tools, I know that the track selection is following me. Next is insertion follows playback. What does this mean? This means that with this off, and I press play. I, know that I respond really well to a taper. So that just means I just have to condition myself to some top ends. When I stop, it goes back to where I started. So I'll show you again. We know that I respond really well to a taper. Stop, goes back to where I started. We know that I respond really well to a taper. With this on, you can quick shortcut this with the letter N, as long as keyboard focus is on, tap N. When I press play. We know that I respond really well to a taper. So that just means and when I press I stop, it will move to where I stopped. To myself, there's some top end singles nearer the time so that neuromuscularly I could make that connection and get rid of that. Okay. Uh, the next functionality here, this is about automation following your edits. So I quickly showed the automation lines for uh, volume. And those are found by hitting the minus key at the top of your keyboard, not on a numpad. Uh, tap that on and off. That'll turn it on and off on the track that you're on. If you want it all, hold down Alt and it'll do all the tracks and show you that. If, for instance, I have put in some automation like that, with this on, if I select this, edit it and move it, and we look at that automation, it's gone with it. With this off, make the selection, edit it and move it, that automation stays where it was. This is great if you've got something you've mixed and you're replacing something and you don't want that fader to change or that motion of a plugin to change or some automation, but it could be a mute function. You just know you want that section muted. Doesn't matter what audio is in there, that section is muted. Having this off is pretty helpful for that scenario. However, as I say, I like to know when I'm starting to learn something, what I've done and how I've done it. So keep it all linked. This next function is mirrored MIDI editing. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that today. We're not doing any MIDI editing. Uh, this is all about post-production. And the last one is layered editing. Now I'm gonna demonstrate layered editing, hopefully. Separate that, and I'm gonna get this bit here. Now, without layered editing on, if I do that and then delete, it deletes whatever was underneath it, right? Now I'm going to put layered editing on. I'm going to move that there, overlap that clip, and I'm going to delete that clip. And the clip that's underneath it still exists. So that is layered editing. I like that. Um, some people want it to be more destructive, have it off, gone, gone. But I like layered editing. So we will keep that on for now. Now then, say you've done a load of separations, we can heal those with Command and H. That will heal any break points you have made in the clip. So those are those functionalities. Next along, we have got some zoom functionality. We've got zoom in and out. So this is your R and your T. We've got your waveform height up and down. Now let me think about the shortcut for this. It is the square brackets and it is command and shift. It is command and alt. Uh, and that's square bracket open and close. So that'll be control and alt on a PC. 
zoom up, zoom down. Uh, that does the MIDI functionality. Again, you zoom in, zoom out. Here are your zoom presets. You can resave these, I believe, if I zoom in there and I hold down Command or Control and click on it. It will resave it and I'll zoom out and I'll press 5. And these are attached to the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the top of your QWERTY keyboard. So those are zoom presets. And finally, I am going to describe these wonderful things called edit modes. Now we'll start with shuffle. I'll show you shuffle in action. We're going to make that selection there and I'm going to hit delete. And it's going to delete that section and it's going to shuffle everything from the right to the left as far as it can go with regards to a region being in front of it. If I drop a new clip in, so I'm going to drop in this clip, it will always try and find the start point for it in shuffle mode. As you can see, it's chomped over all of that, but I could have put it there as a start point. So that's shuffle mode. Now, the hard thing about shuffle mode is that it doesn't default across multiple clips. So if I start saying, right, I don't want any of that, that's all nonsense, and we're in shuffle mode, we delete that. This track hasn't come with it. So you need to make sure your selections are appropriate. Uh, and a way around that is to use groups. To make a group, Command and G, select two tracks, Command and G, create your group, edit. And now I have a group. I can turn my groups on and off here. So we'll turn that group back on. You can do groups on and off really quickly by doing uh, Command, Shift, and G. We'll turn your groups on and off. You activate it. You can have it on keyboard focus. Um, so now I can say, actually, all of this was rubbish. We'll delete that. And it will shuffle along. I want to turn that off. Command, and Shift, and G. And I'm back to the single track. So that is shuffle mode. The next mode, F2 is slip mode. Slip mode allows you to move things around freely. If I jump back into F1, shift, you can see that shuffle mode only gives me two options to move this clip. It either stays where the hell it is, or it can go to the beginning of the session. Your choice. Slip mode allows us to move around very freely. We can edit things and this stays where it is. Uh, and primarily these are the two functionalities you'll probably use. Slip and shuffle. Shuffle's great, as I say, for moving blocks of information. Say we don't want this question. Turn the group on for a quick second. F1. So I don't want that question in there. I just want him to keep talking and we'll go like that. Marathon, a half iron man, an iron man, or a sub 20 this, sub 40 that, etc. Don't need that. Clean a lot, but it's, uh, it's yeah, that, that's sub 40 that, etc. etc. It's, yeah. So that's shuffle mode. Uh, slip mode allows you far more freedom to move things around. Remember, if you are in groups, slip mode will move everything in the groups. It's group tracks. So we'll turn our groups off again. Command shift G, control shift G. Uh, the next edit mode is spot mode. Click it. It says, where do you want me to put it? And that's spot mode for you. Um, this can be handy if you are bringing things into Pro Tools and you know where you want it to go, start of the session or at two minutes or something. Um, but that's spot mode. As a podcast editor, you probably won't be using that much. Audio Press Production doesn't overly use spot mode. And then we've got our two grid modes. We can right click on this button here or we can press F4 a couple of times to change between grid modes. Grid mode, as I mentioned earlier, follows the functionality of the grid you have created. So mine are in frames, we can see, and it just moves. You can see it's a bit clunky. Let's go to the top of that clip. So I'm just gonna go back to the top of that clip and you can see I'm moving by grid and it snaps it to these lines. So those are our edit modes, shuffle, slip, spot, grid. Put that in absolute. We've got our zoom functionality, our zoom preset. We've got our toggle zoom. We've got our zoom tool. We've got our trimmer, 
our selector, our grabber, which amalgamate together to become the smart tool. We've got our scrubber tool to listen to small pieces of audio, and we've got our pencil tool to help us draw things. Underneath that, we've got our tab to transient functionality, our link timeline and edit selection, our link track and edit selection, our insertion follows playback, following the automation follows your editing, MIDI functionality that we're not worried about, and layered editing, which I really like. So let me quickly assemble my edit because that's what we're here to do. So I'm in slip mode. I've got my intro here and I have got the body of the podcast there. Spacebar is play. I haven't touched on that. I just assume that's obvious for most Hello, people and, and that's not very fair. So yeah, Spacebar. And welcome to the progress theory. Uh, if you've got a QWERTY keyboard and you've got a numpad, you can use one and two to go forward and backwards and zero to play. Um, I will stick up a keyboard shortcut still. Uh, I'll put it in the comments or in the description so that you guys can link to it. There's uh, some nice websites out there to let you learn the keyboard shortcuts a lot easier. Now, this is Dr. Phil's intro. He's tried three times. Uh, quick judge of character. If the first one was good enough, he wouldn't have tried the second. The second isn't long enough, which means he fluffed up. So we're going to assume the third one is the right one. It's a punchy assumption, but this is a quick start video and we spent far too long not being quick enough. So... I'm just going to have a quick listen to this and see Hello and welcome how to the Program Theory, where we discuss scientific principles for optimising human performance. Now this brings me nicely on to my next editing point, which is gain, clip gain. Now I like to keep all of my faders at zero. Unity, as it's known. Uh, ignoring this, this is only low, so I don't blow your ears off with the podcast. Um, Otherwise, I would be going in and I'd be adjusting that to get it to the right volume and adjust that one even more to get the right volume. And then when it comes to that final phase of going through a mixing, if you've got a controller, I have an Avid S1 with faders, you don't have the flexibility to move up any further if you've already put the fader up to full. So while you're editing, make your best efforts to sort of turn the clip up itself rather than turning faders or volumes up. How can we do this? Pro Tools has a functionality called Clip Gain. Just down in here, see this little fader? You can see this little readout here. If we go to Clip, uh, View, sorry, we go View, Clip, we can see Clip Gain Line, Info, and Clip Gain Status. To see the line, we can click that, and it puts this little line that looks a lot like the volume line. Where's my volume line? Boom, there's your volume line. But this is on the clip. You can see it doesn't go beyond the clip limits itself. Now I can grab this up and down. Some people love to have this up all the time. And you can see it's on all the tracks. And we can go in and we can adjust them. And work out where we're at. Now I'm just going to come back. Today's episode. We I'm actually going to hide that. Control, shift and minus at the top of the QWERTY keyboard. Which on a PC will be Windows shift minus at the top of the keyboard so instead of volume automation it's showing us the clip gain now we can access that by getting this little fader here or we can grab the clip and we can hold down control and shift or windows and shift and up and down on the directional keypad and that moves in increments of your choosing which is in the preferences as well preferences editing Clip game nudge. We can change that there. I'm not going to dive into the preferences too much in this video. That will all be covered in the upcoming Pro Tools Primer course. So what am I looking for? Well, we've already set the meters to K12. I'm, he says, looking at PPM, uh, K12 across all of them. And I'm looking for it to be in the amber. Hello and welcome to the Progress Theory, where we discuss scientific principles a bit for optimising human performance. Let's turn it I on am a Dr. Bit. Bill Price, and on today's episode, we are joined by hybrid athlete and coach at Omni Don't want it peaking. Fergus Crawley. 
Now, I've been watching Fergus's YouTube channel. I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's have a little look on these meters. Just yeah, I want it to sit around that zero mark. Despite misconceptions of perfect, and that means when I come to vi uh, when I come to mix it, I've got the twelve decibels of headroom to push the volume up, and I've also got all of that range below if I need to turn it down. What it's important to do is not to clip. I don't want that Easy slamming in the red. That is fine. Numbers, Rob. Now, a little trick which is lazy. I know once you've got everything, if you press uh, Control Alt and Command and use uh, close, uh, yeah, open bracket, open square bracket, it will reset the waveform height. So my waveforms are all like that. I can go Control, Alt, Command, open bracket, bonk, and it brings it all down to the base level related to the gain itself. On a PC, that will be Windows, Alt, and Control, and open bracket, open square bracket. Now what we can do is we can use a trick that I call hair cutting. You know when they cut your hair and they sort of use the initial cut as the measurement for the next cut. I can see here roughly, when I get that at the same height, uh, control and up down on the D arrows, I can roughly see that they're all kind of the same height. Give you death by detail on, on sort of how we've got here. And, and there we go. Here's the real top line. Sum. So clip gain. Make these edits as your clips come into your timeline so that later you're not pushing faders to go crazy. The advantages of having a bus as well is that I've got another 12 decibels of headroom here if I wanted it. So let's get assembling. I've got my intro there. Let's bring in some music on there. We're going to have music start at the beginning. Bring in a whoosh. We're going to put the whoosh. I don't want the whoosh, I don't want, I just want one side of the whoosh. Just a little mono effect. So we are going to assemble this. So the music looks incredibly loud. We'll prove that point, we'll solo that. Yeah, that's far too loud. So we're just going to bring that down. Most mastered music is about tw uh, 12 decibels too loud. So that's where I'm going to put that. That'll work nicely there. And I want the end of the track. So I'm just going to do a quick music edit, control and up to make the track bigger. I could have zoom toggled it, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> So I'm looking for a nice beat point. Let's see if I can find that. Mm -hmm. Not far off. Let's see how that sounds. Uh, Shift and S will turn on the solo. So I'm a B out there, and I put that back. So there's a little bit of a change. So I'm just going to use these to line it up. Don't want it in grid mode. Let's get it in slip mode. I can line up those beats there. Put that there. I'm going to put a fade in. I can use my smart tool. Put a fade in. Or I can make a selection with a fade, which is F. Or if I want control over the fade, I can do Command F or Control F on a PC, and it'll open the fade window. And we'll just see how that sounds. And we're just going to put that there. And we're going to zoom this out of the way for the outro. So that's that assembled. And then I'm going to go into a little wishy here. Just make sure the wish sounds all right. Mm. 
Lovely. Actually, I'm going to create a new track. And I'm going to create STSFX. And this is a great example to show you how important routing is. I have no input, but I want that to go to the SFX bus. See how much easier it is when everything's labeled. You could start a session and go straight into your I.O. settings and build the buses out that you need. Of course, you can save this as a template, which we'll come to at the end of the session. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a stereo version of that. I think it will sound better. Nice, that'll work. Change that to Lello as well. I might hide that. I don't, I don't think I'm going to need it. So you can right click on the name and it gives you all of the options here. And all of this will be covered in greater detail in the course. And let's get into the editing of the episode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that group back on. I'm going to go back into shuffle mode. And I'm going to work like this. Just going to tighten up. Well, actually, I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to listen to this. Fergus, how are we? I'm good. I've had a roller coaster of a week because we've just been laughing about <laughs> off screen. Yeah, well, we saw each other, what, Thursday, Friday last week. So there's been a little bit of a timing issue here from Riverside. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tighten it up. Now, what I'll need to be aware of later down the timeline is whether they are going to talk over each other. But this is a podcast. We aren't using the video. We can do what we want in terms of synchronization. So, Fergus, how are we? I'm good. I've had a roller coaster for a week because we've just been laughing about off screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we saw each other, what, Thursday, Friday last week, and you've had so many different things happen to you already. Okay, that's going to look fine. I'm going to... Just make my waveform a little bit bigger. And I can put fades in here. Now I'm going to share with you a quick editing tool that I use, which is called Strip Silence. And that is accessed by Command and U or Control and U and Strip Silence. A little window comes up. Make sure it doesn't open up in another window. You can give this some parameters to show you how much or little the strip silence, the strip silence will strip. So I'm going to say, and you can kind of see what it's going to strip. We can give it some handles at the front and the back, just to make sure the S's, soft letters don't get trimmed, and we can strip, and it will strip it down like that. Now, there's a gift and a curse with this is that if you move one clip, all the others don't move. And if you're in shuffle mode, there is a risk here of things going awry. You could, on the other hand, just work your way through and edit the show up like that. So that's strip silence. Again, that will be covered in the course a little bit more. But let's pretend we've gone through and we've made our edits. Let's have a look here. Monday was good up until about... So I'm going to put this in shuffle mode. Now make sure my group is on. There we are. was good up until about 8pm and then food poisoning symptoms. I'm just going to tidy that up. And then food poisoning symptoms started to set in. Monday night was rampant food poisoning. I'll leave you to figure out the details. And Tuesday was a write-off because it was a whole day of sleep. So we'll come out of shuffle mode. Go up here. Now, an interesting thing about having a group on is the group is going to try and move that bottom green clip. But because the clip hasn't been separated, it doesn't. And we'll just continue working our way through. It was just Now some options here are having your edit window scroll after playback. When you finish, it will jump to your, where your play cursor finished. You can have it move page by page. So as it gets into the page, it scrolls a page or continuous. I prefer continuous. Existence in general, because I just felt I can so see what's coming. Week, that it was just a day of, that it was just a, that it was just. 
We can have a little look there, put a fade in. It was just a day of recovery, really. So what are we now? Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. I sort of caught up on the work on the work that I needed to do on Tuesday. And here we are. So yeah, fairly tumultuous yeah. couple of days. Several highs and lows. Yeah. Huge. Talked over each other a little bit there. So I'm just going to turn this group off to edit that. Put some fades in, just using F to put the fades in using the selector yeah. tool. But huge congratulations on your... Huge, huge. And we're going to go back into shuffle mode. And I'm going to make the selection across both tracks, not using the group. Huge congratulations on your engagement and obviously completing the uh, mammoth six-hour run plus powerlifting. Um, I definitely will ask some questions around that. But for those listening to the podcast that are not too familiar with your work, do you want to give a bit of a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, so I'll be as brief as I can, but the, the sort of two two or three sides to what I do really. One is very much focused on mental health, awareness, fundraising. Spoiler alert. He wasn't as quick as he could be because it was a six and a half minute answer. It was a great answer. Uh, and this is where editing becomes divided down the middle. Are we editing content or are we editing for hygiene reasons? Moving those stumbles, pops, clicks, whizzes, those hesitant points, the ums and the ahs, or the repetition of words, like, 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 like that. Um, it's entirely up to you. It depends on what kind of editor you are. It depends on what you deem as editing. I might say that all of that is rubbish. We'll just delete that, put a fade in there. We might actually say that all of these affirmations that Dr. Phil's making might not need those. Uh, we could delete those. If you don't want to delete something, you just want to mute a clip, it's Command and M, and it will just grey it out. It's far easier to mute a clip than it is to m automate and mute a channel. And we can start to see the universe up here a little bit more as well. We can move around and we know where the different colours of things are. So I would go through and I would edit my show. I'm gonna use strip silence to pretend that I've edited. You can batch fade if you do Command and F on a load of fades and you can set those. I like around 55, 55, 55 and I change that to equal power for dialogue. Um, so let's pretend I have edited. I've gone through, I've removed the ums and the ahs. Let's crack on. And let's talk more about automation, making that mix work for you. Now, the first thing about automation is fades. Fades are automation. You can easily put them on things. You can adjust them with the smart tool. Um, there are keyboard shortcuts. You can use D and you can use G. To D will fade in from front, G will fade in from back, F will just default fades, Command F will allow you to get to your fade window where you can change the length and the style of your fades. Now traditionally equal power is great for things that aren't in phase. But if you're using equal power on music, you might hear a slight rise in the music as those equal power crossfades join. So I'd use equal gain for music, crossfades, equal power for pretty much everything else. So fades, that's the first piece of automation you're going to play with and you will play with it a lot. Top corner, top corner. If I wanted to, I could eep, bottom corner, reach those two together. Uh, the next thing is volume. Now, doing your volume automation is, of course, easiest if you've got a controller, but this is a quick start guide. You don't have a Pro Tools controller, and that's fine. You can make selections on each clip, and you can move the volume line up and down manually using the trimmer tool in the volume lane. Uh, to, remember to get to the volume lane. It is just minus at the top of the QWERTY keyboard, and you can go through. You can use the selector and then use the trimmer to alter your volume. We have the pencil tool already demonstrated to control those peaks and troughs. You can draw it in like that. I know 
award-winning dubbing mixers and sound editors that do use the pencil tool. There is no shame in using the pencil tool. Uh, if you want to use broad brush strokes for a whole track, make sure you've got everything selected in the track. Command and A will select everything in the track, then do your automation. Otherwise, if we come out of that and we think we've got everything, as we move out of that selection, it'll move it all up. In the selection, it will move just that area in the way that you want. So that is volume. And like I say, the other option for volume control is with the pencil tool or when you are working with, I'll put this into an automation. This is automation modes are here. Off, read, read is obvious. Touch, when you touch something, it writes the automation. Latch, when you touch something, it writes the automation and it continues to stay at whatever level you leave it at until you stop playback. Touch latch is a combo. Write will rewrite all of the automation every time you run through. So touch is the best mode to be in. And same thing, top end. Strength. I can move the fader in this window and manage the 12 minutes. And show you I have drawn that automation. So that is volume. The next automation you're going to come across is panning. I'm going to show you panning in the mix window just here. So mono tracks have a single panning knob and pan hard left and hard right. This is going into a stereo channel, so it has two channels to go into. The stereo channels have a left and a right that can go into a left and a right by a certain amount. You can do this automation as I just did by pressing play and moving the knob itself. However, if you really wanted to do something with panning, I think the best way to do it is to access the panning automation lane. Automation lanes are in this little folder here. So we're going to go pan left. And I can choose to pan everything over that way. And it'll sound like that. Now we can see the faders were showing Hello, the clip Welcome itself. Theory. We Meet up. Um, but we can see on the music track here, it is all coming in hard on the right. I'm going to stop that. So that's panning. Again, just like volume automation, make a selection, move it around. You can use the pencil tool. If you've got a controller, you can control it from there. So those are the three elements of automation that everyone will use no matter what they're doing. Really basic stuff. Fades, using the volume fader, and using your panning options. So let's demonstrate some volume and some panning. Now, I know that the panning is right for this music, but if you were importing from somewhere else, like uh, from Avid or from Premiere, quite often using an AAF, the audio will come in as mono. And then you put it on a stereo track, you'll need to pan it left and right. Now, we've already done that. We've checked that. We've gone left. That looks all good. Right. That looks all good. So let's do some volume. Now I'm going to do some really crude ducking here. I'm going to make my selection of the audio at the top there. I'm going to go down, up and down in the edit window are P and colon. And tab left and right is L and uh, apostrophe. There we are, L, apostrophe, colon, P. So it's just kind of over that side of the keyboard, another little... Instead of using the D arrows, it's all over there. So I'm going to make this crude selection and I'm going to move down onto the music track. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it down by about nine. Now, if we hear that, it will be a bit harsh. Hello and welcome. Ooh, hard ducking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth that out. I'm just going to move that node a tiny bit that way. And then I'm going to make a selection there. And I'm going to use the nudge functionality to nudge backwards and forwards. Uh, maybe one, two. So that was M for five nudges to the left. Uh, question mark or uh, slash five nudges to the right. And then the uh, comma and full stop will use single value. So let's have a listen to this. Hello and welcome. I think we can just move that back a touch. We'll have 
Hello and welcome. I want that fade to be reacting to his voice, but not happening before. And then on the way out, I'm going to grab this node again. To remove a node, you hold down Alt and you see that little minus sign, but I don't want to do that. And we're going to fade this up. No, I kind of like that. Let's have a little listen. All of our other episodes. Here is Fergus Crawley. Fergus, how are we? I'm good. I've had a roller coaster for a week. Great. So that is some volume automation put in. We're going to do the same at the end here. Let's get the end of the track again, because I like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it using A, or S will trim the other way, undo. And I'm going to move this somewhere around here. That looks like nonsense. That looks like the last bit of audio said. So I know that I want that to be the last bit. And I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to use the fade to fade across. I'm going to slow that fade down by grabbing the fade and pulling it down. And we'll see how that sounds. Beyonce, a very, very Merry Christmas. And hopefully, especially with Human 24, we'll be catching up in the new year very soon. Agreed. Agreed. Have a good Christmas. New Year. And see you next year. Yeah, we'll do, mate. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm actually going to compliment that by just doing a little bit more volume automation. So again, I'm going to do it really crudely, but it doesn't really matter if it sounds good. There is no right or wrong way to mix audio if it sounds good. If it sounds bad, then you've done it wrong. But if it sounds good, I don't care how you did it. Agreed. Agreed. Have a good Christmas. Happy New Year and see you next year. Yeah, we'll do, mate. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> That will work for me. Little evergreen faux pas in there saying Merry Christmas. We haven't launched this episode and we are in February now. So that's volume automation done. I could go through and I could find certain areas. I might think here feels a bit too loud and we'll just pull him down or we'll grab the fader and we'll draw some automation here where we think there's a little bit too much going on there. Turn that down, turn that down. Can you see as well that when you draw with the pencil tool, it pulls all the automation bef down before it if there were no nodes before it. Let me show you how we prevent that. If I wanted to make a change to this block here, and I did this, and then I did this, you see it all affects all of these before it. So you can just tap it once to put a node in. And then if I pull this down, and then I pull this down, that node prevents anything changing ahead of it. It's a really handy tool. You can put nodes in throughout once you're in the grabber mode. Now the next thing I want to talk about is inserts. Now at the top of your track, command and equals to get into your mix window, we have inserts. And I'm gonna show you everything that you can show here. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. Mm -mm. So, up here we have, you can have mic preamps. We don't have any of those. MIDI instruments don't have any of those. We have lots of inserts. We have 10 inserts. We have 10 sends. These are usable as other buses send to somewhere. So a track can have another 10 routing options. EQ curve. We'll talk about EQ in a second. Meters and faders. There's obviously the meters and the faders. IO. Object. That's to do with object based mixing for Atmos. Delay compensation down the bottom here. Pro Tools is clever enough that it can um, offset the processing of certain plugins. Track color, we can hide that. And comments, we can hide those. We're just gonna leave this like this. If we wanted to make it more colorful, we could go into the track color and we can have it brighten up. Track saturation. You can make them all nice. So inserts. 
Now I'm going to talk about three of the most common inserts. First one being EQ, equalization. Next one being dynamics. This is compression and limiting, controlling the dynamic of the audio itself and effects. And this can be things like modulation, delay and reverb. So EQ. I'm going to show you the Pro Tools stock EQ. You do get these uh, Focusrite ones as well. I think these, everything I have here came with my subscription bundle. I'm going to work with EQ7 because it's the easiest to demonstrate. Now I've put the EQ on the channel itself. I could have put it on the bus if I wanted to EQ all of the dialogue in the same way. Now some basic equalization that I'm just going to throw on here is I'm going to use a high pass filter. What this does is it only allows through anything above the filter line. Why is this useful? Well, you might hear from my voice, it's very low, rumbly. If I hit the mic, there's some impact. You can have plosives, which are those popping peas. That's just a big puff of air going into the mic, causing the uh, capsule to just sort of distort slightly. Now, most of the time, I'm not going to need anything below 60. Uh, some people have really hissy rooms or air conditioning, or they might have low rate electronics, and there's normally a hiss. And so I'm going to do a low pass filter, and I'm going to reduce anything in the top end there. And I'll have a quick listen. Hello, and welcome to the Progress Theory. Well Stop that. Now, what have I done there? I have put in some mute automation. Great example. If you're in touch mode and you hit mute, it will record it. So let's take that out. We don't want that on there. I'm going to delete that mute automation. Lesson learned. Jeez. And we can just go through. Now, this isn't an EQ video. This is a quick start guide to let you get into Pro Tools and get cracking. But the long and short of EQ, grab a node, move it around find stuff you do like, don't like, add it or reduce it. In this case, we're just going to try and find how we can sweeten this up. Got to remember people listening on earbuds or they're in their cars or they're on the move. So I want it to be clear, intelligible. And if I can warm it up, I will. So we are joined by hybrid athlete and Too coach warm. at Omnia Performance, Fergus. Crawley. Sounds good. Now I've been watching Fergus's YouTube channel for well over a year now. Bit of clarity there. I'm impressed with this how he's pushing the boundaries of human performance. Despite misconceptions around strength training and endurance training simultaneously, he's been able to show that you can hit impressive numbers while powerlifting. Now, to make the these training bands smaller, we can alter the cue on them. That's really here. Enjoyed this episode make as it narrow. Well as discusses his accomplishments, how all of these physical challenges have allowed him to redefine what is hard, and also how he programs his hybrid training. A little if bit boxy in there. Competing in multiple Thanks sports. Pull that out a little bit. This is the episode for you. As always, follow the Progress Theory on Instagram, YouTube. Head to our website, theprogresstheory.com, and check out all of our other episodes. Here is Fergus Crawley. Wicked. So that's not going to make it sound like particularly rich, but above the music, it should cut through nicely. Fergus Crawley. Now, I've been watching Fergus's YouTube channel. Now, the most important thing when it comes to inserts using EQ dynamic FX, A, B. Turn it on, turn it off. If you can hear the difference, good. If it's, is it a good difference? Yes or no. If it's not, dial it back, change it, tinker with it. You need to learn how to listen for the changes that really can't be taught on YouTube. Have a play with your EQ. Well over a year now, and I've been so impressed with just how he's pushing the boundaries of human. He sounds nice and warm. Despite misconceptions around strength training. And but like that, he's going to sound better when I'm on my run. He's been able to show that you can hit impressive numbers while powerlifting, while at the same time training for an ultramath. And I won't go into my rant, but there seems to be a, a, a style that people want things to sound like old radio. And if I'm honest, old radio was incredibly limited by the way it could broadcast and the reason stuff sounded so compressed and muddy is because it had to be to be transmitted nowadays we don't have to have that let's make people sound like they're in the room with you as opposed to being compressed into a tiny tiny waveform so that's eq if you want to see your io we access them here 
So we've got some inserts, all the inserts, look, we can look at our IO, exactly the same as in the mix window, which is accessed down here. And we can see it's showing us our little EQ there, which isn't nice. We're all gonna do the same for Fergus, and we're just gonna jump in here and see what we can find. Empty and was just so incredibly lacklustre with existence in general because I just felt so worn out and weak that it was just a day of recovery, really. So what are we now? Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. I sort of caught up on the work on the work that I needed to do on Tuesday, and here we are. So, yeah, fairly tumultuous. Yeah. A couple of... I'm not going to dive into that too much. Like I say, this is, um, this is to get you going with Pro Tools. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you is a compressor. Compressors are, uh, what's the best one? The Pro Compressor comes in your subscription, if you've got the subscription. This is great. We basically say, for every three, let one through. And we can change that ratio. So one for one, every one that comes in, let one through. So a good amount of compression that you would hear would be around four to one. So for every one, for every four decibels, I want you to let through just one. It's the really sort of simplistic way of looking at it. So we'll look Stop at that. It was a whole day of sleep I'm just going to click here to show the attenuation. And was just so... So we're saying, right, for every four decibels that come through, allow one. Now what we need to do is set a threshold and say, when does that kick in? And if we move this, you'll see this little line here move. And this is your threshold line. And we can grab this if we want. So the lower the threshold, the quicker this compressor will start to act. We can see uh, some insane attenuation. And you can see it's compressed. Recovery. Really? So what are we now? Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. I sort of caught up on the work on the work that I need to do on Tuesday. Other functionality in here is the knee, and that's this function here. From here to here is how many decibels is that slope? We can make it a really soft knee. It takes 30 decibels to get to that threshold point, or we can have it really hard. So when it gets... Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. I sort of bang, bang, bang. On the work that I need to do on Tuesday, and here we are. So, yeah. Fairly tumultuous. Soft knees are good. Attack, how quickly the compressor starts. So, what are we now? How quickly Thursday, it reacts. Slow. What are we now? Thursday, Wednesday was... Very different again, sort of type of attenuation. There are some great YouTube videos on compression. Have a play with those. Release is how fast it releases. If I have a slow one there, you'll so, see. What are we now? Ooh. Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. So, the compressor just kind of stays on. So there's a perfect balance between finding the right threshold, the right ratio, a good knee, an attack that's not too fast, not too slow, and a release that's not too fast, not too slow. You've got your depth control here. Um, this isn't relevant for this setting at the moment, but we could have that at, we could say, hard, stop at minus two. I'm not going to worry about depth. The mix of wet, dry, how much compressed audio is mixed with the actual dry audio. We want that 100% wet. We're compressing the whole track. And obviously it's attenuating. We can have a look here. Thursday, Wednesday was productive again. I sort of caught off. Attenuating between two and four decibels, but really around one. So what we might want to do is put that back in. And we'll put that back in by Wednesday putting was makeup in. Again. I sort of caught up on the work on. So that's compression. Um, we could turn this into a limiter by making it having a very hard like that. The work that I need to do on Tuesday, and here we are. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Several high. So, an extreme compression is considered a limiter. However, there are such things as limiters, and we can look at adding one of those as well. Uh, I recommend for podcasts having a limiter set at minus three. Uh, the reason being for this is because of some of the tests and studies people have done with MP3 um, encoding and anything over minus three, that <clears throat> anything over minus one definitely has problems uh, with the encoding. It sort of can digitally 
clip or compress in a way that isn't very nice. Uh, just to be safe, I know that minus three is good and your audience isn't going to know the difference between a true peak of minus three, minus one. They're just not because it's your overall loudness that matters. So that's a limiter. Um, and I'm just going, play with these plugins. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments of the video or come over to the course and we'll have a whole uh, student area where you can ask me questions about all of these plugins. The last thing I want to discuss in terms of mixing is effects. Now, I have a very specific way that I usually deal with effects that allows me to blend them in. And I'm going to do it on this music track. So on the music track, I am going to create a send. Send, and it's going to go to bus 9 and 10. Now I'm going to call bus. Let's go into I.O. Bus 9 and 10 will be rev send. And if you click on this it opens another little fader and this is all automatable exactly like the channel itself and I can send the music signal out not from here but from here to anywhere I choose I've sent it to rev send and I'm going to make this little guy receive rev send and he's going to spit it back into the music bus it's alive and I'm actually going to change his color slightly to be like that. These aren't my color schemes, by the way. These are just random color schemes. But what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to put a reverb. Now, there are some great reverbs come with Pro Tools for free. Other people like to go out of their way and buy other ones. For now, we're going to use Revibe. Really simple to use. Click here to choose your different reverb. And we're going to use a plate, a large, bright plate. That's one of my go-tos. So many settings. I'm really not going to dive into these uh, too much. Just trust that clicking through the templates and the settings is the best way to play with these things. So what I'm going to do is on the music track, I can access this by holding down Control, Alt and Command and clicking on the fader and it will show me the automation lane for that function. Uh, that would be Control, Windows and Alt on a PC. Give it a click and we're there. Now we can see that the send is fully open on this channel. So I'm actually going to pull all of that automation down. And what I want is on the end of this track here, I'm going to put in some crude automation. Make sure that that's okay. Now I'm going to solo this music track and I'm going to see. Ah, nice. And we can see that reverb working just there and it sends that back into the music bus. And what it does is it gives me this nice splashy end. Here is Fergus Crawley. I might go a bit bigger just for Fergus Crawley. Fergus, how are we? I'm good. There we go. So that's an effect, uh, and I've got complete control over how much of that goes in the effect by using the send itself. I can then control the effect itself on that channel and on that fader there, I can control how much of that effect bus goes into the mix. So it's a really nice way of adjusting how you control things. Of course, what I can do as well is I can put the same send. I wouldn't do this because I would have a, a separate one for dialogue, but if I wanted to, I could come here and I could go into here and I'm gonna go level. Solo that, and we're going to just listen. Hello, and welcome to the Progress Theory, where we discuss some principles for optimizing human performance. I am Dr. Paul Price, and that gives me that control there as well. I would have separate reverbs for every element, that would be the dialogues and SFX and the music. We will have their own sends, their own reverbs. Um, it gets confusing as you get bigger and bigger and bigger but it just gives me more control over the mixing. And it means that when I create my archives, there's no dialogue in the music stem and there's no reverb from the music in the dialogue stem. 
but that's one way of using an effect. Other things you can do is you can put effects directly on the channel. So a good one would be, what have we got? Want something a little bit movie. Here we go, talk box. So open the talk box. Now, and I've been so impressed with just how he's pushing the boundaries of we can performance. Despite misconceptions around strength training and endurance training simultaneously, he's been able to show you that you can hit impressive numbers, Rob. Making him sound like he's through the wall, or we could try something else. Let's see what else we've got. An orange phaser. Powerlifting, while at the same time training for an ultramarathon or a... More use cases for sound design rather than podcast editing, but if you did want to do some certain effects, that's how they work. So that is EQ, balancing tonally, dynamics, controlling those uh, peaks and troughs of your audio, and then effects, changing, reverb, modulating, distortion, whatever you want beyond effects and dynamics. Now, I guess the final thing to do is to talk about mixing, that final mixing. What I would do is I would look to balance the audio. We've already kind of done it with a clip, but I look to find that yeah, a couple of days, several highs and when we go between contributors, there's no volume difference. I can alter that with clip gain. I can alter that with volume automation, or I can be cutting away any audio that I find is clashing and people are talking over each other and it's giving a volume in rise. The next way I would look at mixing is understanding your meters, knowing where a good balance is. Familiar. Having a good well, look. Do you want to give a bit of a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, so I'll be as brief as I can. Understanding your meters, really important. And then finally, what I would look to have is I look to have some sort of sound field. I've got one here, another set of meters. Two or three sides to what I do. Uh, there's some great ones out there. I'll put them in the description, some free loudness meters. Ideally, you want your podcast to sit now, they say, between minus 18 and minus 16. I would say have a true peak of no higher than minus three, but that's me. And you want to use a loudness meter to help you get there. Um, so let's see if I can put a loudness meter on here. Really, one is very much focused on mental health awareness, fundraising off the back of a negative experience I had with my own mental health from 2014. So since then, I've raised just over £100,000 for Movember. So I'd say it's a little bit too quiet. We've got the options of using compression or volume or EQ to balance out your mix. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of this quick start guide. We have opened a new session in Pro Tools. We have built out our new tracks, our buses. We've looked at the routing. We've created audio tracks, auxes. We've done reverb sends. We've got a master output. We've gone through, we've edited our timeline using the smart tool and the edit modes. We've created a group. We've gone through and we've mixed using volume automation, fades, panning. We've used EQ, compression and limiting to create the tone of our audio and to make it all balanced and feel sweet. And then we'll go through and we'll do a master mix pass where I'll be touching the faders, we'll be looking at the meters, we'll be looking at the balance between contributors and music. We know that our volume and our loudness is at the levels that we want for our distribution platforms. We are now ready to export. Now to export, you want to go in and out from your I start at the back, so I make a selection here, that's my out point, and then I'm going to go to the top of the show, and I'm going to come in there, and I'm going to use T, great, and I know that I've double checked that there's no volume, there's no media missing, I've got everything selected. When we're there, it is Alt, Command and B to open the bounce window which will be Control, Alt and B on a PC, or we can go to the menu here and we can go Bounce Mix. Now, in our Bounce Mix window, we can save some presets, we can look for some presets if we've got any, we can choose what the file name, file format is, we can choose where the audio is coming from, 
because we can have multiple sources of audio. We can choose what audio type it is and we can ask it to pad to frame boundary. Uh, that's if you're using um, Avid or Premiere and it works in frames, it, if it's if Pro Tools isn't within a frame, it will pad it out so it starts on a whole frame. We can ask it to import and we can tell it where to save. And most importantly, this checkbox down here, offline. Offline means it is not going to bounce in real time. It's going to bounce quicker. Ideally, more than four times the speed of the length of your show, which is the whole point of offline bouncing, a lot faster. Now, before I click bounce, I've got to warn you about something. For demonstration purposes, I had this master fader set down there. If you're going to bounce and you're going to use the monitor output, then make sure that that channel is set appropriately. If this is like all the way down, you'll export nothing. However, the best way around this is to use a bus before it. And this is where my mix bus comes in. So we'll go back, we've got my selection, Command Alt B, and we're there, and I'm gonna say, and we'll call it export. But I'm not gonna use this physical output, I'm gonna use my bus. And I'm gonna use everything that is in the mix bus. Import after bounce, yeah, why not? And I'm happy, and we will click bounce. Now, why do I import after bounce? Well, I import after bounce because it is a great way of spot checking that audio file. You might be asking as well why I've not exported as MP3. Well, I wanted this to be quite quick for the video, but you can, of course, export as MP3 and it'll ask you to put in some basic metadata there as well. However, at the moment, I've been uh, using Isotope just to do any loudness corrections. Uh, on my master mp3 and to look at the encoding outside of Pro Tools just as part of my workflow. And once that audio is completed bouncing, it'll ask you audio import options again. Do you want it to come in as a new track or in the clip list? This time I want it to come in as a new track and I want it to go in as the selection just in case I'd selected further down the timeline is the same as my selection there. And we'll bring that in and that should be my mix, I can hit solo. And there aren't many people doing that at a decent level. And that is my file. If I want, I'm just going to show you the MP3 option. I know a lot of people want to go straight out to MP3. You tick that box and it'll ask you, do you want to create an MP3 as well? And you can choose your bit depth of your MP3, how fast it encodes, all of the stuff there. Click OK, click bounce. And that will also make you an MP3. These are then stored in quick start Deep. and you'll see bounce files they'll all be in there so that is my pro tools quick start if you have any questions please reach out in the comments let me know um, the pro tools primer course will be coming early 2022 i know we're in february already the time's got away from me um, but yet yeah, Follow the links for more information about the complete Pro Tools primer. That will be about six, seven hours of dedicated beginners Pro Tools tuition for post-production editing and podcast editing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.